Hey everyone, it's Raigao here from Raigao Tech. Welcome to the very last episode in learning to use Google Docs because we will have covered all the different things that you need to know about Google Docs. Before we carry on, I would really ask you to subscribe to the channel because that way um, you'll get other videos on other tutorials about other Google Docs applications and other things you might be interested in learning about in terms of technology. So I highly recommend you subscribe and also click the notification bell so that way whenever any new um, video is uploaded to the, the channel you'll get notified um, about that as well as it turning up in your news feed so I highly recommend you click the notification bell as well so we're going to cover how to add special characters to your document how to add proper equations to the document adding using the equation editor and how to um, add a table and format a table to show um, some information in a tabular format. So first of all open up your document um, that you had from last time and then let's give yourself some room so give yourself some room to play around in and remember you can always undo things later on if you want to. So let's add a special character into the document so if you go to the insert menu and go special characters so that will bring up the special character window and it should be set to symbol with the arrows um, symbol here so if you can have a look through and have a look at all the different types of special characters that you want so let's say I wanted an arrow in my document let's say I wanted this arrow here for some reason so just click on that um, and it will actually add that into your document and you can increase the size by increasing the font size so it's based on a font so if you select it and then choose the font size you can make it bigger and make it as big as you want kind of thing Cool, so let's insert another character. So if we go to the insert menu, go special characters. So you can also draw a symbol, which is kind of cool. Let's say I want to draw that symbol there for some reason. And it'll try and search for um, something that matches that. So it won't insert that into your document, but it'll find the best match it can. And look, there is a symbol that matches what I just drew. I just drew that by random. That's pretty cool. So choose that, and you can see that it adds that symbol into your document. And again, you can reduce the font size down sweet um, or you could just make them both the same size if you wanted um, you can do that as well so um, there's lots of different special characters that you can have um, so it's showing the search results so if you click on that and go back to categories that takes us back to where we were before all right you can also search by a keyword um, like left so it only shows things which kind of match the keyword left in there uh, and again click on that go back to um, categories and it shows you uh, all the categories again or you can choose recent characters and that will show you the recent ones that you've chosen if you've known that you want to use a character you've chosen recently you can choose that um, and if you go to categories if you choose symbol there's a whole bunch of other things that you can choose from so you can choose from emojis punctuations um, number special characters there's lots of different things the ones which um, have a square like that it means that that symbol isn't loaded on your computer so you can't use that particular symbol uh, modifier cool there's also a um, whole bunch of other ones that you can actually use as well so go back to symbol and under symbol you can choose the next one and you can choose all of these other different things to choose from based on the symbol category. So we can choose Braille. So we can increase, uh, include Braille characters if you want to do that. Control pictures um, kind of matches things with to do with coding. Uh, currency symbols. So you can include currency symbols into your document. Um, game pieces. And if you want to include chess pieces for some reason. So there's a whole bunch of things. So basically. Um, when you're ready just have a look through some of these pause the recording or after the recording just go through and have a look at all the different types of symbols there are try inserting some in and see what they look like and that way you'll get a really good idea as to what kind of symbols you can include into your document all right so we've done that so what we're going to do now is we're going to look at how we can include equations um, into our document so I've got a list of mathematical formulae here. So the formula for an area of a rectangle is area is equal to the width times the height. So we want to include this 
um, equation into our document we could just take a picture of it and include a picture of the formula but then we can't edit it later on right so it's not quite so good so it'd be good if we could have something that we can edit in case things change uh, we want to change the formula or whatever so let's have a look at how we could do this in our document now without using the document editor what we could do is just go area is equal to width times the length so it kind of looks like an equation but it kind of doesn't quite match because this time symbol is the same size as that I mean you could drop that down to make it look like it might be a multiplication symbol it's so any equation is best done using the actual equation editor all right so if you go to insert and then you choose um, equation that brings up and you can see we've got a little box with the cursor flashing inside it so this little box is our equation editor and as we type things in it makes the equation get bigger okay right so we want to implement our formula area is equal to the width times the length okay so if we just go area which is an a and actually we'll make the font a bit bigger just to make it a bit more readable so let's make it uh, 18 size so we got area uh, even that's not quite that big let's make it bigger let's go for 30. Hmm. all right so i've made it 30 size just to make it quite readable Okay, so we're going to go area so you can see that a is always used for area and it kind of gives us a different font so this is the basic font that's inside um, the equation editor so it's different from our normal font so area equals the width so we could put x for times but you see it doesn't quite match up with the mathematical symbol for x so this is where we want to use our equation editor up the top here so it's got a whole bunch of symbols that we can insert in so this one has all the Greek letters this one has all the mathematical symbols okay and you can see we've got the multiplication symbol here so if you click on that it puts in the multiplication symbol cool and then we put H and that gives us the height then if you click off it you can see we have our equation if you click on it again we can edit the equation using the equation editor tools that we have up here sweet so why don't you pause the recording and have a go at adding that one into your own one using the equation editor and you can always rewind the video a little bit if you want to see how I did it all right so that's that one done so the next one we're going to implement is the area for a square so the area for a square is the length to the power of two so area is equal to length L to the power of two so let's add that into our document using the equation editor so you could go insert equation but you'll see we've got the toolbar up here so you can just click on new equation and that inserts a new equation for us so area equals so we have to go L to the power of 2 but if you put 2 after it it's not subscripted uh, it's not superscripted above the L right so we need to use the equation editor for this so this one here is all the math operations if you click on this button you can see that we've got x to the power of b this is what we want right l to the power of 2 so click on that and so you type in l and then if you typed in 2 you can see it doesn't superscript up to the top of it so what you have to do is type in l hit the tab key and you can see the cursor moves up so that we can put the superscript above it and then we can put 2 like that cool so by so you go l tab and then you can put the two above that so again why don't you pause the recording have a go at doing that in your own one so make sure that you can go area is equal to l to the power of two or l squared right welcome back so we're going to do things a little bit uh, different now so the next equation we're going to do is a triangle is equal to the um, area is equal to the base times the height divided by 2 so that will give us the area of a triangle so let's look at how do we implement that in the equation editor so you'll notice that 
the b times h all of that is divided by 2 okay so we need to allow for that so we go so insert a new equation area equals so we need to put in the mathematical operator first and we need the division operator right because we need to go b times h divided by 2 so again if we go up to the mathematical operations you'll see we've got the division operator here a divided by b so if you click on that so we can go um, base times the height so b insert the multiplication symbol which is that one b times h and then if you click underneath it we can put the two there sweet so that gives us area is equal to b times h divided by two so again pause the recording have a go at doing that in your own document just to practice doing it and then come back to the video sweet all right so hopefully you've got that working so let's look at the next one which we're going to do the area of a circle so the area of a circle is um, pi times r squared okay so let's implement that so insert a new equation area equals so we want to put pi so that's a symbol so if we click on so it's not a greek letter so it's not in that one actually it is in that one sorry it is it is there so there it is there's pi so click on that and that puts in pi for us then we need to do the power of operation so we want to click on this first before we do oh actually you can do it afterwards i think let's try that if we go r2 if i select both of those two and then do this no it doesn't do that unfortunately so you have to do it click on that button first so we're going to go x to the power of b so go r remember hit the tab key and then that allows us to put the superscript above it so there we go so that gives us the area of a um, triangle all right well that one's done let's do something a little bit more complicated so let's do this one here the trapezoid which is area is equal to uh, b the large side plus b the small side divided by 2 times h so this one's a little bit more tricky so let's have a go at doing that one all right so here so insert a new equation area equals so we need to put the division operator in first so go to maths operations go a divided by b so it's capital b uh, capital b plus b plus lowercase b plus so insert the plus symbol no you can just put a plus in manually on the keyboard that's all we need to do so b plus b then divided by 2 but if i try and go um, the next part which is times h if i go times you can see that it puts it down here right which is not where we want it it has to go after it so what you have to do is hit the tab key so hit the tab key and you can't see the cursor it's just off the edge there but if you now put in the time symbol you can see that appears over there and then we can put in h like that sweet so we've got b, b plus b divided by 2 times h so that's the area of a trapezoid so again pause your pause the video and have a go at doing that equation into your document all right so we're going to implement um, working at the distance between two points so here's the formula here so x1 minus x2 to the power of 2 plus y1 minus y2 to the power of 2 work that out and then do the square root of all of that and that's the distance between the two points x1 y1 and x2 y2 so let's have a look go at implementing that particular formula right so the first thing is to put in the ab and it has to have a line across the top so to do that we need to choose this one here it's got, got an x with a line across so go ab now if you don't do anything else and just go space you can see the line carries on which is not what we want so after ab hit the tab key and that gets off putting the line across the top then we can go equals the next step is to do the square root symbol 
so put in the square root symbol <coughs> which is this one here cool and then the next thing we need to do is we need to do that to the power of 2 so we need to put the exponent operator in sweet so go up to math operations and choose x to the power of b so that puts that in so we'll put the our first bracket in and then in the bracket we need to go x with a subscript of 1 <coughs> alright so we need to go x subscript of 1 so again go to the mathematical operations and we want this one here x with an a as its subscript so choose that so go x hit the tab key we get a 1 hit the tab key so that it goes off doing that then we can go minus and then for x2 we need to do the subscript again so we go choose our subscript option again so we go x hit the tab key go 2 hit the tab key so then we can put the bracket in hit the tab key and then we can put our exponent right so then we get to the power of 2 hit the tab key again so then we can carry on with the next part which is plus and then we do the next part so remember if anything goes wrong you can always go undo and go backwards so then we're going to go plus so right so we still need to do our brackets to the power of 2 so we need to do the exponent operator first so go to math operations choose x to the power of b to put that in then bracket and then we need to go y1 so we need to put the subscript operator so click in here and go x a so that puts the subscript in so we're going to go y hit the tab key 1 hit the tab key minus and then put the subscript operator in again so choose x a again and go y hit the tab key 2 hit the tab key put the end bracket in hit the tab key put the 2 in and there we go we've got our formula that works out the distance between two points so that one's quite complicated but hopefully you kind of worked out how to do it so again pause the video have a go at doing that yourself rewind and watch the video if you need to and hopefully you can get that um, done in all right welcome back so that's the basics of using the equation editor so that means that you have proper equations in your document but you can also go back and edit those if you wanted to so it's not a problem all right so that's the equation editor done if you need to do you know lots of other um, equations you'll just have to practice doing that um, there might be other videos on YouTube as well that might help you with that okay so there's all of our equations done so what we're going to do now is learn how to um, insert tables into our document and what we're going to do is we're going to produce a table that contains all of our formulae um, in the table in a nice format so put some blank spaces up here in your document and we're going to insert a new table into our document here so if you go insert and go to table you can see that you can choose the number of rows and columns for your table so going this way increases the number of columns and going down increases the number of rows so I want two columns and let's choose three rows at this stage so two by three okay so two columns and three rows so if you click on that it inserts two columns and three rows in so what we're going to do is we're going to put our formulae into here okay now if you find that uh, actually no, we'll do it I'll, I'll show you how you can insert extra rows and columns into the table a bit later on so what we're going to do is on the the very left hand the first column we're going to put the name of the formula and the second column we're going to put our actual formula okay so this is going to be area of rectangle cool and then we're going to so if we just choose that and go control x or right click and go cut and then go control v or right click and go paste and that will put in the formula there so area of a rectangle the next one is area of a square so we'll choose that cut that paste that into there cool the next one was area of a triangle 
select that cut that paste that into there right and now I still need some more rows for my other two formulae right so there's a couple of ways of doing it if you put your mouse into here if you go to format table you can insert a row above insert a row below so I go insert row above you can see it puts a new row in here if I want to do that go control Z to undo if I go um, insert uh, sorry format table insert row below then it adds a new row below it which is awesome or if you put your um, cursor in the last cell of the table and hit the tab key so if I hit the tab key here it automatically inserts a new table so hit the tab key to go to the next one hit the tab key it inserts a new one all right so that's how you can easily add um, new ones in so we'll just move this move our formulate back up here so let's put in the rest of them so this is area of circle and, and this is area of trapezoid cool and there's another one to go which is distance between two points so let's add another row in all right so let's move all of our formulae into there and the last one cool now you can see the last one is a bit cut off because um, the table is not big enough right so we'll need to fix that in a minute but at this stage why don't you pause the video and make sure you've got the names of all the formulae and you've copied um, all your formulae into there all right welcome back hopefully your table looks like this so we've got quite a bit of space um, after the names of these so we can reduce um, the the amount of the width for the first column so if you put your mouse over the column line here the column separator you can see it changes to look like this and that allows you to click and drag the column separator so if you click and drag you can see you can change how big and how much width you have for that particular column so we can drag it to there but you can see it's still too too big that very last so what we need to do is we need to change the font of all of these formulae here right because remember we set them at 30 so let's change the font and let's make it 18 there we go that looks a bit nicer so why don't you do that on your one cool and again we can increase or decrease um, the font so we don't want too much gap at the end so again at the very end of the table you can see we can click and drag and make the end of the table smaller as well right so why don't you do that to your table so it kind of looks like this sweet all right so um, what we want to do now is um, let's put in some column headers for each of these I mean we can tell because we're creating the document what these are for but if you want specific column headers so that people know exactly what's in each column then that's a good idea so what we want to do is we want to insert a new row before this one so you can right click in here and it brings up um, the same things from the format table thing uh, format table option which is quite cool so just so just right so in your table right click and go insert row above cool so let's put name of formulae and this one we can put um, put formulae there so we should make this the same size as that which is 11 points so let's change that sweet so that way it looks consistent cool and I guess I mean you could change the colors of your text there if you wanted to make it kind of stand out a little bit you could do that it's not a problem all right so we've got the um, header there now maybe we want a title for our um, particular um, table here so to do that we're going to have to insert a new row so again click in here go right click insert row above and we want to put this table of mathematical formulae 
Now the only problem is that it goes inside one cell but I really want it to go across the entire table right but we can't do that because this has two cells for that entire row. So one, one way of getting around this problem is we can merge both of these two cells into one cell without it affecting the rest of the table. So we want to merge these two cells together. So basically to do that we want to highlight the two cells like so. If you right click on it you can see it has merged cells so if you choose that it makes it one cell and now our um, text here will be for what that one completed cell. If you highlight that cell right click on it and go unmerge cells it puts it back to how we had it before. So on your document um, add in the title of the table and merge the two cells together and then what we can do is change the text alignment to be center aligned and now the heading is in the middle of our table. Does that not look cool or what? And uh, maybe you change the color of that font just to make it stand out a bit. Let's make it red. There we go. Now the other thing you'll notice is that um, the text um, in here is left aligned which is what we want but you'll notice that it appears at the top of each of these particular cells. So we want to learn how we can format the table to get it to align things exactly how we want. So I don't want to change this, I want to leave that alignment as it is, but I want to change all of these ones. Okay. So to do that we can, whoops, undo that. To do that we can highlight all of these and it only affects these highlighted ones. So again if you right click and to do to make it in the middle um, vertically we need to go to the table properties option. So go to table properties sweet, and you can see you've got the cell vertical alignment. So currently the cell vertical alignment is set to the top of the cell. So if I choose bottom and choose OK look what happens. It all gets aligned at the bottom of the cell. Again if we select it, right click, go table properties and change the vertical alignment to middle now it appears in the middle and because these are equations they will be in the middle of the cell automatically which is exactly what we want. So why don't you pause the video and make it so that all of your names are middle aligned in their particular cells. Awesome the next thing to look at is the um, the padding around the text inside the cell. So um, let's choose all of these. If you right click and go to table properties you'll see the cell padding. Okay, So that's the space around the text inside the cell. So if I change this to 0 0.5 and click OK look what happens. You can see we've got a 0 0.5 um, margin around the text so it basically just spaces everything out. If we undo that and have no padding, let's have a look at what no padding looks like. So right click, go to table properties, go zero, click OK. You can see there's absolutely no gap between the table, um, edges of the table and your text. Okay, it's, So you want to have a little bit of t um, padding around your um, table. So we probably want to do everything and make all the padding exactly the same. So let's go right click, table properties, let's go for 0 0.1, that's normally a good one to do. Cool, so that gives us a nice amount of space in our table. And you can actually align the whole table on your page as well. So if we select the whole table and go right click, go to table properties. Actually before I do that why don't you pause the video and make sure you've got your correct padding for your table. Alright so let's get the table to align on the page so select the whole table go right click. If you go to table properties and we can choose the table alignment. So currently it's aligned to the left hand edge of the page. Click on this and go right. You can see it now moves to the right hand edge of the page. If we select it again and go table properties and go center then it puts it in the middle of the page which looks nicer. Okay so why don't you pause the video and get your table to align in the middle of the page. 
Sweet. All right, well, that's all done. So the last thing to do is to look at how we can uh, format the background of the cell um, and how we can also do um, the, um, the borders around the cells and so on. So let's say that for the very first one, I want to have a bit of shading for that. So select that, go right click and go table properties. Uh, so we want to go cell background color. So it's only the cell color that you've chosen, I believe. So we'll, we'll double check that. So let's choose a grayish color. Click OK. And you can see it just changes it for what you've selected. Sweet. Um, so that's how you can change it. So let's say for all of these, I want all of these to be in a different color. So go to table properties, cell background color. Let's choose I don't know, it's that color there. What does that look like? Oh, yeah, not too bad. So why don't you have pause the video, have a play around with changing the background colors of different cells, and then just choose something that you would like for your particular table. It doesn't really matter uh, what it is. All right, so that's how we can change the shading and colors for our particular cells. The next thing is the actual borders. All right, so. Um, so when you click in a part of the table, you'll see there's a little arrow here. So when you click this arrow, it lets you choose the particular borders for what for that thing that you've selected. So at the moment, I've only got this one cell selected. So if I click on this and choose everything, it just highlights everything around that cell because there's nothing in between it. It's just a single cell. Sweet. If I just choose that and choose the right only, you can see it only chooses the right hand border. Again, if I click on this and choose left, it chooses the left border. This is the top border. This is the bottom border. If you choose this one, which is the middle border, there is no middle border for it to select, right? Now, if we choose two cells, click on the arrow here and choose the outside borders, you can see it highlights only the outside borders of that particular cell there, okay? So let's say I want to choose this one, choose the outside borders. So it chooses that, and I want to change the thickness of that line, right? So we can change that. If you look up the top, you've got some um, settings so that changes the border color and the border width and what it kind of looks like. So the border dash, you can have a straight line, you can have a dash line. So if I choose dash line. Notice you get dots appearing. If I use that, that gives you dashed line. If I choose that, that gives you a full line going around. This one here chooses the um, the width of the border. So choose one point. Everything is a single point. Choose three points. It's now really thick. They're all three points around that. Uh, let's go for one and a half point. And again, you can choose, uh, change the color if you really wanted to. Okay. Um, and again, if you choose all of this, click on the little arrow here. If you just choose this one here, it only chooses the middle border across it. So let's say I want to make this a dotted line. So we'll make that a dotted line. And you can see that that becomes a dotted line. And all of these remain the same. The next thing is I want all of these ones going across to be dotted lines as well. So you can select all of this. Choose that. And we want to choose the middle one. So it chooses only the middle ones, not the outside ones. And then we want to make that a dotted line as well. Cool. So that way the inside borders look a little bit different from the outside borders. All right, so that's how you can um, choose different parts of your of the borders for your particular table. And then once you've chosen some, you can also click on it to select it. So if you click on this, it selects that part. If you go shift and go click, it selects that one as well. So that way you can select irregular borders rather than just choosing from um, the little pop-up menu as well. So you can go shift click and click on those. So just play around with choosing different types of borders, play around with changing the border styles, um, play around with clicking individual borders and selecting multiple individual borders and get it to format the table exactly how you want it to be. All right, I think I've pretty much covered all the border settings. Uh, I didn't talk about deleting rows or columns. 
so let's say that hey I, I no longer want to have this row anymore so if you right click on that and go delete row that deletes your entire row for you if you want to add a new column then um, just click on the table somewhere or click on this column somewhere right click and go insert column to the right and it inserts a new column for you right click and go delete column and it deletes the column cool um, oh I didn't talk about getting it to automatically um, spread the table out for you so you can see that when we added the other column it reduced the width and now it doesn't look very good so if we select the table again and go right click and if you go distribute columns it makes the columns distribute evenly based on the size of your table so we need to make this table a bit bigger out to there a bit bigger still cool and then if you go distribute columns it will distribute the columns evenly for you so it makes them both exactly the same width now that's obviously not good for us because we, we want to see that one there you can also distribute the rows evenly um, by doing the same thing of course that's how you can auto distribute um, those particular things um, otherwise we've covered pretty much everything that you need to know for creating a table all right so pretty much that covers all of the um, main main features of using Google Docs the other main thing we haven't done is inserting a chart um, because we need to learn how to use the Google Sheets spreadsheet application first and I'll be doing some uh, tutorial videos on that so keep a lookout for that which is why I said to subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell so that you'll be notified if you want to learn about how to use a spreadsheet application which is a really useful skill to have um, you can insert a drawing but you're better off doing a drawing in something like Microsoft Paint or some other drawing package and then just um, inserting it in as an image all right, well, that's the end of uh, all the videos um, on learning how to use uh, Google Docs. Hopefully you found them really useful and enjoyable. And if you did, then give the video a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, you're welcome to give it a thumbs down if you want. Um, and if you have any comments to make about the videos, would love to hear your comments as well. Anyway, that's it for this particular tutorial series. Hopefully I'll catch you in the next series, which will be learning how to use Google Sheets. All right, catch you next time.